How's it going all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And today, join me for an overview of Our Encounters with Evil and Other Stories Library Edition from Dark Horse Comics. So let's go ahead and get started. And welcome back everybody. So what we're looking at here is the latest library edition from Dark Horse Comics. This is Our Encounters with Evil and Other Stories. Now, the stories in here have been previously released in three standard size hardcovers, uh, which I gave away a while back, so I don't have any to compare them to, but I am going to compare the size of this library edition to another collected edition. This is an epic collection, which is the trim size of a comic book. The pages are the size of that of a single issue of a floppy. And of course, what is a library edition from Dark Horse Comparison without comparing it to the mother of all library editions, the Hellboy Library? Hellboy Library tends to always be longer than any other of the library editions, but it is the same height. So, I mean, if you want to put it right next to your Hellboy Library editions and just not push it all the way in, I mean, who does that anyway, right? Anybody? Uh, but keep it out a little bit flush right up against that other spine. But this is what the spine looks like, our encounters with evil and other stories, Mignola, Johnson Cadwell, and Dark Horse, by the way, Johnson Cadwell is just one person. Putting the focus back to this, here on the back we have this little frame of the two main characters. I guess there's really three main characters, four in the third story, but that's Professor Mainheart, and that is his assistant, Mr. Knox. And up here, comics and graphic novel horror, yeah, but they forgot comedy, because that's really what this is. The book retailing for $39.99. And here is a front piece by Mike Mignola. And here you again have Professor Mainhart, Knox, and a couple of other characters which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Now I am going to be showcasing the artwork inside of the book and talking about the premise. So maybe just a little bit of spoilers for the setup and what exactly to find in here. And that's mainly so you can focus on the artwork, because whenever you look at a cover like this, or whenever you look at a Hellboy, or a Mike Mignola BPRD, or Joe Golem, or any of his Ape Sapien, Lobster Johnson, Baltimore, you expect a similar style to Mignola, and you're about to find something a little bit different. Now, before I go any further, though, big thank you to the folks at Dark Horse for sending us a copy of this library edition. Alright, let's go ahead and start this overview. Okay, let's go ahead and crack this book open. Here's a nice image by Warwick Johnson Cad uh, Cadwell. And here's our encounters with evil and other stories, which is really what the second book was called. So this collects a series of three different original graphic novels uh, written by Mike Mignola and Warwick Johnson Cadwell and art and colors by Johnson Cadwell and letters by Clem Robbins. Now, one thing I'm going to say is that Mike Mignola is the writer on the first story, or co-writer, co actually, in the first story. And then the rest of it is all done by Warwick Johnson Codwell. So that is something to keep in mind if you're like, oh, I can't wait to read all these stories by Mike Mignola. It's not really him. He does mainly the first story and then supplies covers for the other two graphic novels. And here are your three stories. Mr. Higgins Comes Home, which is the very first one that came out in 2017, I believe. Then a couple of years later, in 2019, 2020, we got our encounters with evil. And then the last one, oh, and by the way, The Adventures of Professor J.T. Mainhart and his assistant, Mr. Knox, is the full title of that. And Falcon Spear to wrap up that trilogy. And in this, you get a sketchbook. So this does have more than those original graphic novels. Those were all released in standard size hardcover format and unfortunately are out of print as of this video. Mike Mignola supplying the cover here. For the very first book, Mr. Higgins Comes Home. And here is a thank you to all those who follow the adventures of Professor Meinhardt. To all those who... F and here is a thank you to all those who follow the adventure... And here is a thank you to all those who are following the adventures of Professor Meinhardt, Mr. Knox, and Mary Van Sloan. Many thanks. Warwick Johnson Cadwell. So it all kicks off with this very first graphic novel. And this is... I don't want to say it's a continuing story, but you are going to be following the adventures of those two characters that we found in the back. So in here, 
Professor Mainheart is woken up by a vampire. Now, he's not startled, he's not really scared, he's just like, we'll have none of that. By the way, this all starts a long time ago. I think the next story is a hundred years ago is where this is. But here you find him and his assistant, uh, JT Mainheart and Mr. Knox, go and visit Mr. Higgins in hopes of receiving his aid in hunting down Count Kolga. And Count Kolga resides in his own castle, and we find out exactly through Mr. Higgins what happened. So Albert Higgins tells them a story about how him and his wife went to this castle. She got turned into a vampire, and he got a big curse on him. Now, I'm not going to reveal what the big curse on him is, but don't expect just vampires in these type of stories. Expect other creatures. This really does feel like one of those Hammer movies, the way this is written, because it's very comical. Now, he agrees to go with them if they shoot him and kill him. So that's the deal. He can help them find this castle and this count as long as they kill him. And they're like, okay, yeah, sure, that sounds like a good idea. And of course, things don't always go according to plan. As a matter of fact, I love this. As soon as they arrive in the castle, their coats are taken away from them because they're guests. And Professor Mainhart's like, oh, huh, I wasn't expecting them to take our coats. We don't have anything on us. All my weapons were in my coat. So <laughs> Knox is like, well, I got a little gun. And it is adventure like that that you're going to find in the first volume. It has a very comedic ending. So this is what the artwork looks like. We are now looking at the second story, which is actually a combination of many stories, uh, little short stories. But the first one introduces us to their new partner, and that is Mary Van Sloan. So she's another vampire monster hunter, just like they are. And I think this one has four or five different little short stories in it. it it's, it's one long arc, but it's basically four or five stories that make it up. Now, the artwork. Let's talk about that because we've been talking about the story and the comedic sense that you get out of it. I think it fits well. I, I mean, obviously, he is the writer on the second and third graphic novel, which we haven't looked at the third one yet. But for the type of story that they're telling here, it fits well. He has this Kevin O'Neill type of art to him. Maybe a little bit of Pope in there. But... I dig it. I can see why people could be turned off by this, expecting Mike Mignola greatness, or someone that shares that Mignola flair, like Brigetto or Campbell, or even Tyler Crook, to just name a few. If you're expecting that type of artwork, yeah, this isn't it. This is more of this type of style, which, honestly, I've really enjoyed. Now, at the end of the second story arc, or the second graphic novel, uh, they characters get a letter from this gentleman named Falcon Spear, or all, that's all they say. All they say is Falcon Spear. Now, in the third story, it's revealed that there were four of them at one time, that it wasn't just Mary, that it wasn't just Knox, and it wasn't just J.T. Mainhart. There was a fourth member to the team, and that's James Falcon Spear. And they follow clues to get them to this particular region in Europe, and then in Asia to meet him by the Black Sea. Now, once they find this lost member that they thought was dead or gone, he ends up telling them this grim story. And he has this uh, request of them, if they will. And I will just leave it at that, because to tell the rest would be a big spoiler. But this is what the artwork looks like. Let me show you some of the action sequences, if you will. There's not really, like, a lot of action like you would expect in Hellboy. As a matter of fact, this feels more like the comedic tone in Hellboy more than it does the dark tone of BPRD. Because you all know, if you've read BPRD, that story literally goes to hell. I mean, that's what, not a spoiler. That's what one of the titles of the book series is. But anyway, uh, back to this. The, the panel flow is nice. The color tone that he uses... I really like on his art. Of course, he is the penciler, inker, and colorist, so it does help. Now, all the way in the back is where you're going to find the sketchbooks for all three of the books in here. The character designs and the concept art, even some of the layouts. All back here. There's Falcon Spear. 
And then, of course, the covers, but in black and white, by Mike Mignola. And then recommended reading. The book, again, has 240 pages. And I forgot to mention that this piece right here of the spine, I guess, this and the hinges. It's all this cloth-like material like you found in the Hellboy library editions. Everything else is just art on board and there is no dust jacket. Now, taking a look at that spine, and it is sewn binding, no ribbon, but they don't necessarily advertise that there's a ribbon in each of the library editions, so this is just one of the ones that doesn't have one. Uh, so, that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. That was the content, the page count, and build of this library edition. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking this up, if you're a big fan of the Magnolaverse, or just like Mike Magnola's style in general, and if you've already read the stories here, if you had these standard edition hardcovers. I would love to know all those comments down below. If you have any more questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. Thank you so much to our patrons for making videos like this possible. Everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.